This is the clarinet part for Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto, the second movement. Um, and it starts with this big clarinet solo, which accompanies uh, triplets in the piano, so it's quavers against triplets. And then later on, it moves into this duet, well, sort of duet accompaniment between first and second clarinet where the triplets are passed from the first to the second clarinet part who plays in the in the gaps and then back again to first clarinet and so you get this kind of string of triplets accompanying um, the beautiful melody in the piano solo part and this is one of the famous famous bits um, and it needs a lot of control uh, and a beautiful sound, very careful ensemble with the piano and following the conductor yeah. very precisely. Um, so I'm going to play bits of this and hopefully give you some ideas about how it could go. Now there are just a few general comments about this excerpt, um, Rachmaninoff's Piano Concerto Number no. Two, Second Movement. It's an incredibly, probably the most romantic uh, pieces ever written. Extremely popular for that, um, but no less of a piece of music for being so popular. Um, it takes real control and real passion and that's quite difficult to achieve because there's a certain amount of rubato in the playing um, and the pianist and the conductor have to get that perfectly together and the clarinetist has to go with that the added complication being that it's triplets against uh, triplets in the piano against quavers in the clarinet at uh, the beginning part of that and vice versa later on uh, so that makes it much harder to coordinate and it's really important that you listen as a clarinetist and make sure that you're absolutely with the piano and going with their interpretation of the rubato. Um, the entries have to be sort of out of nowhere, so don't use the tongue as my suggestion, just use the breath to start the note out of nowhere and yet the part has to project at a piano dynamic right to the back of the hall and to and to um, convey this kind of pent up beautiful romanticism um, uh, so that's a, a suggestion there it also has to be absolutely in time um, so despite having said there's rubato in it the pulse of it is absolutely the quaver relating to the crotchet relating to the triplet has to be incredibly precise and there are these uh, hairpin markings which are very typical of of um, Rachmaninoff and also very uh, characteristic of the Romantic era and they do need to be really expressive they do need to be heard uh, and they do need to be, in a sense, more exaggerated than you would play in, say, Beethoven um, or Mozart. Uh, so there's a few few ideas there. In terms of the sound, it again, it has to be projected and it has to be this beautiful, warm sound, but it must never be allowed to get away from you. So the embouchure has to be very controlled, and yet to get the warmth, 
you need a kind of softness of the lips. So there's a sort of underneath control and muscular control of the embouchure, but it can be kind of cushioned with a, a really soft lip on the outside. It's difficult to explain that, but the embouchure formation has to be very secure. But you can cushion just the the outsides of the edges of the lip to, to give that extra warmth of sound and a little bit of vibrato. <laughs> On a technical note, um, playing a good legato is absolutely essential to this excerpt and playing it successfully, as it is with actually all clarinet playing. I say to all my students that good breath support from the diaphragm uh, and not from the chest uh, is essential for being able to produce a good sound and long sustained legato uh, phrases which is essential for this excerpt and also for absolutely everything else because good breath is the basis for good technique it helps for good tonguing it helps for uh, basically everything else that you want to do on the clarinet you need that support um, I also wanted to add a thank you to my good wife for making herself available to help me record the duet um, parts of this excerpt um, so yeah thank you very much Karen okay so uh, that's some um, the first of hopefully a series of uh, orchestral excerpt videos that I'm going to do on the clarinet I had the privilege of playing that on Saturday night with the Maidstone Symphony Orchestra that I've been a member of for about six years one of the highlights of my life and cultural life um, playing for that which is a semi professional orchestra with you know really professional standards and excellent repertoire that we play we combined it with the Nielsen Symphony number no. four the inextinguishable but the highlight was uh, probably the Rachmaninoff um, with a Taiwanese uh, soloist and um, just a little bit of background on the piece. It was written by Rachmaninoff uh, around 1900, 1901, at a time when his career was really on the rocks. He was suffering badly from depression, having had massive failures with his first symphony and his first piano concerto. But this piece really turned his life and his career around. Um, he was in love at the time and it represents an outpouring of sort of passion uh, sensuality um, with the odd um, bit of depression coming in as well at times but uh, it um, took him all over the world including to to play with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra he made some money from it he was able to buy a house in Beverly Hills um, and it has become probably the most popular piece of music of all time and certainly the most popular piano concerto and with good reason it's a wonderful piece of music um, so I hope you enjoy it and you will join me for my next video <laughs>